Let's fire them up. Okay, welcome to the Triggered Podcast. This is Randy Haskell, your host. As you guys know, I did have some issues on the last podcast, the one I did with Billy. Uh, it was a whole volume issue. People couldn't hear anything I was saying, no matter how much I turned it up. Uh, I didn't fix it in post. I thought I had, but I didn't. Turns out I had the, uh, the mic positioned wrong. I used the Blue Yeti Professional. I had it positioned wrong of speaking into the end of it instead of in the side like it's supposed to be. And also the gain turned way up high, so it's picking up everything in the background. Um, just settings wrong all the way around. So um, from help from a lot of you guys, I figured a lot of that out. And uh, so hopefully this one will be better. We'll find out. But uh, today we're just going to talk about it's leaf season. I'm up here in the Northeast, as many of you know, and leaf season is upon us. And it is just, it can be a real nightmare or it could be a huge money maker. It can be, you lose a lot of money. I mean, there's just so many different ways it can go. So it's going to come down to the equipment you have and doing the best you have with what you got. Now, that being said, I'm, I'm going to cover a bunch of different categories from different pieces of equipment, how you can use that equipment, how I have found over the years the best ways to use certain pieces of equipment, and also um, different methods you can use for billing customers and still be profitable. Now, I know a lot of guys, and we're going to go into that part first, and then we'll get into the equipment. Um, I know that's what a lot of people come here for. They want to know how to make money and how to be profitable. So many of you guys already know my systems and how I do it, and so I'm just going to run through that. And... I offer it two different ways. Now, I do take on some leaf cleanups of people that are not my current, like every week mowing customers, and those are usually just a set price. Um, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna roughly charge just a total price, let's say, for shits and giggles, let's just say it's 500 bucks for their cleanup. I'm gonna tell them it's $500, I'll probably be here in two waves when I know it's getting close to almost all the leaves being down. I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna bag up or mulch up your entire yard, and then I'm gonna come through once they are completely down, and I am going to blow out all your flower beds, blow everything out into the yard, I'm gonna bag that up, or else mulch that up, and then that'll be your final. So two waves, this is your total price. Now. I do offer that to some of my existing customers, but the ones that have a lot of trees that I know are really bad, really hefty leaf cleanups, I usually don't offer that method to them because I know it's just gonna take a ton of time that I don't have, so I can't be spending all that time on their property. So my most common way that I do it, and I've been doing it for a number of years, and I'll tell you the way I do it, and I'll tell you how I sold it to my customers. What I do is for the whole month of October and usually the first week or two weeks in November, I tell them like, listen, I will come each week and every single week I will bag up your leaves or I will mulch your leaves. 95% um, of my customers, I can leave it at the road and the town comes by and vacs it up each week, um, but some of them I have to haul it away. So whether you have to haul stuff away and whether you have dump fees in your area, I have a number of places I can dump for free. So. If I have to haul it away, it's not that big a deal, um, but I prefer to leave them if I can. So this is what I do. Um, I tell them for the, last, for the four weeks of October, five weeks of October, because um, some days like this year, Thursday and Friday have five weeks, um, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's only four of those weeks in October. So I tell them for the month of October and the first week to two weeks of November, what I do is I come in and I will bag up the lawn, not the flower beds, I don't blow anything out. I bag up the lawn and, or else I mulch up the lawn and if I bag it, I leave it in a pile to road for the town to pick up. If it's one I got a haul away, I haul it away. And then the, um, I will come in once they're all down and do a final. Now, that way, when I do it, when I do it like that, let's say their lawn is $40 a week to cut it in the normal season, just regular mowing, weed whacking and blowing off, okay? And edging. So let's say it's $40 a week. For those weeks, the whole month of October and the first week or two of November, it is now 80 a week. I double that price. Now, I know for some of you, you're gonna say that's a hard sell for my customers. And it is for me too, I'm no different than you are. But the way I sold it to them was, I told them to listen, I can come in and do a final cleanup. I can't guarantee you'll be the last one on my list because I have a lot of customers. So I'll come in and do a final cleanup. You'll pay that one big price, let's say it's at 500, and then two to three days after I leave, it might look like I was never there. 
if i do it this way i stay up on them from week to week to week and that does something for you and something for me one it keeps your lawn looking decent on a weekly basis during the fall season and for me it makes so that the final isn't so bad because the final week that i come in that's the week i blow out all the flower beds and blow everything out and then i mulch that or bag that depending on the amount of leaves now that final it, the price varies on that you know if it's one that's not bad at all it's no big deal and there's nothing left in the yard because i've backed up everything as they've been falling down then it's still that same price but if there's still a lot in the yard that final week nothing left in the trees everything has come down then i'll usually add more on like it could be anywhere from 200 to 300 bucks for that final one okay and that's the one where i blow everything out now that has gone very well for me and what it does it it, it kind of works out to almost the same as if i come in and do that one big final one and do five six seven some of them are a thousand dollars for that final cleanup i'm still kind of making all that money or damn close to it doubling it up and still doing it every week the other thing it allows me to do is it allows me to keep making money through that whole month when most people would be like all right you know the first week of october no more mowing cutting it off and then come back and do my final cleanup the problems that poses is one i lose that steady income for that whole month of october in those first couple weeks of november but also up here in the northeast grass grows in the northeast in the fall not as much as it does in the spring but very similar so if you are bagging with a bagging piece of equipment you now have to cut through that tall grass and bag leaves at the same time that's a nightmare so you have to your best bet is to cut it side discharge it all then go over it at a height one to two notches higher than where you side discharge it at and then bag everything up okay if you try bagging right from the get-go that tall grass and then those leaves on top of it you're going to clog like crazy i don't care what type of mower you're running i don't care what type of bagging system you're running i've run them all you will clog or you have to go insanely slow it takes you forever you're on that property longer what I'm doing each one of them weeks when I'm maintaining it on a regular weekly basis, I'm cutting it short. Like in my area throughout the whole regular season, I'm between three and three and a half inches. That's that's the norm for my area. That's what I normally cut at. When I'm coming those weeks through October and those first week or two in November, I'm at like two and a half, two and three quarter. I'm keeping that shit short because it does two things. One, the leaves hit the ground. Some of them just keep on blowing with the winds we're getting and it blows clear across that lawn and it keeps the leaves down a little bit lighter than it would normally be. And two, I can fly across it with a bagger and just suck up the leaves and I'm barely taking up any grass and it's, uh, it's not making me go slow and it's not clogging up my bagger. A lot of people ask how we get these done and how Billy and I do so many a day or how I do so many a day by myself. That's how I do it. Okay, so that's just some ideas for guys that don't really know or don't really have a system in place. I talked to a guy last year and he said he watched a couple of my videos. He goes, listen, I've been doing this shit for 18 years and I just don't know what, um, you know, I, I don't have my situation in place to where I'm really making the money um, and where I think that I'm being profitable every time. He says, what do you do? And I told him, he goes, you know what? He goes, I can't believe all these years I've been in business. I never thought of that. That's an awesome idea. So he adapted that concept and you know now he's using it. He used it, he contacted me just before fall last year and he used it uh, right there starting last fall, fall 2019. And it's worked really, really well for him. So um, he's, uh, he's making money now to where he wasn't making money before. It wasn't making the amount of money that he wanted to. And uh, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely been a lot better for him and it's worked out for him. So am I saying it's going to work for everybody? No, absolutely not. But it could very well work for you. So if you're looking for another way to go about it, then do it that way. What I have noticed, and I know a lot of people do like an hourly thing. Um, hourly just, uh, you know, it, it, it's never been a thing in my area. I guess some guys in my area probably do it. Um, I've never done it because here's the problem. Um, I've noticed with when you try doing some type of hourly thing, whether it's a fall cleanup, spring cleanup, a landscape project, anything, I always feel like that customer is looking out the window like, why are they sitting there taking a break? I'm paying them by the hour. And then you take shit from a customer. I mean, I'm not saying that's going to happen. And, I, and I, guys with more experience than me could probably answer this better for you. But in my experience, I, I just think that that's how it would happen. I can't even say in my experience, I'm, it's, I guess it's my assumption. I'm thinking that that's how it would happen. And also, you know, if I'm taking now, I spend a lot of money on equipment, 
and i buy the best that i can buy for the money that i have and i think that i have some pretty outstanding equipment anyone's been following me for a number of years and have watched my journey and followed it and see the equipment i have you know i have pretty high-end equipment and i have good equipment so and my equipment is more than capable of doing everything that i need to do and then some so i didn't spend all that money to make little money so if I have, like, usually when I go and do a cleanup, I have my Skag V-Ride 2 with the turbine bagging system on it, and I have my Walker MT, which has the, the turbine on that. Those two pieces of equipment can pick up some massive leaves, deep leaves, wet leaves, just they can just really do the job and knock out a property. Billy and I get on a property and we're, we're in now, they're bagging the leaves. I mean, thick leaves, just a regular coating, can't even see any grass on an acre, acre and a half property. We're out of there in 40 minutes bagging that whole thing up. I mean, we can cruise through a property. And I don't, it, it comes back to kind of like the old saying, whereas you're not paying me for my time here, you're paying me for my experience. It allowed me to do it in that time. So. If I go to a property and there is a shit ton of leaves, there are sticks everywhere, and I can go in there, me and Billy, and knock that property out in an hour, and let's say I'm charging 75, 80 bucks an hour, I just made 80 bucks in that property when normally, I could just tell you from experience, I can go in there and charge 450, $500 for that property, and people will pay it all day. So why am I gonna charge the hourly rate? You see what I'm saying? So I'm screwing myself. And even if I went, say, on a fall cleanup, $75 a man hour, and it's Billy and I both there, and I'm in now there now, that's 150 bucks when I could have made 500 on that property. You see what I'm saying? So it, it takes experience to get to that point where you can look at a property and roughly know, okay, I know how I work if, I'm, if you're just solar. I know how I work and I know how my guys work. So I know what Billy and I can do together. Um, and I know the work we can bust out and I know what my equipment is capable of and I can look at a property and be like okay well the MT is gonna have to bag a little slower here because it's wet and it will clog up more but the skag can cruise on the shit so I know what my equipment can do and I know roughly how long it'll take me so I can take all it into, into account and I know okay I can bust this out pretty quick but if I charge an hourly rate I'm screwing myself so I'll just go and give the customer a flat rate and that's what it'll be so I, a lot of it comes with experience, but there's different methods to go about. There's different ways that you can do it. You can do a final or one price, or you can do it weekly like I do it. Um, and then a final at the end, if it's a property that's still going to have a good amount at the end or a lot in the flower beds, or if it's one that's not going to have that much in the flower beds at all. And when, by the time you get there that final week, you know, there's nothing really left in the yard. You've been bagging it up for the last few weeks. So you're just blowing that out into the yard and just bagging it up. It's really not going to take you any longer than it has the last few weeks and just charge that same double weekly price for that last one as well and no no substantial final you know what i mean and you've still made plenty of money and you've kept that customer's yard looking good from week to week to week throughout the whole fall season whereas their neighbors haven't so you make their lawn look better they're more than happy with it you've made a good amount of money and you stayed working instead of being laid off for that month of october see what i'm saying so just a couple ideas there um let's get into equipment now if you have any questions on any piece of equipment that you may have whether you've been in this industry for years or whether you're just starting off i guarantee you i have a video pertaining to that and how you can bag with that okay i have videos on the skag tiger cat 2 with the three bag turbine propelled bagging system i have videos on um the skag freedom z sit down zero turn with a 6.2 jumbo accelerator i have videos on a great dane stander with the accelerator i have videos on bunton ferris skag walk behinds with an accelerator or a steel grass catcher i have videos on the walker mower mt with the ghs the hopper on the back the grass handling system uh, bag and leaves with that i have videos on um ryan's zk with the push plow on the front by jrco um pushing leaves i have videos on um, making a huge tarp bag system that goes on an accelerator grass catcher or a steel grass catcher it can be mounted on any i have many videos of how to use it i have many videos of me using it 
um, I have videos on actually I made a video of me making this and how you can buy the supplies from Harbor Freight for like 25 bucks and build this thing that holds massive amounts of leaves and then how to attach it to your bagging system um, I have videos on the Skag V-Ride 2 with that bagging system I may have already said that um, just everything it, you name it I think I have some old videos of Ryan with his old Skag or with his old uh, Ferris sit down zero turn with his bagging system on the back I just have a plethora of bagging systems for doing leaves and different ways to do leaves I have videos on the Ferris FB 3000 stand on blower um, I did 17 videos on that last year using that I have videos on little wonder walk behind blowers so I mean the point is, it, no matter what the equipment is, no matter what the setup is that you have, go through my videos on Countryside Vlogs on YouTube and you will find everything that you need. I also have different blade setups and this we're, we're going to start off right there, okay? Because the, your blade setup has a lot to do with the type of bagging system that you are running. Now, people have come to me in many videos and said, Listen, Randy, I need to know because I watch you do it in your videos and it works like a charm and I see the lawn, I see the leaves is picking up. I tried to put the same thing in my mower and it's not doing anything close. So let's start with blade setup. Now, do I recommend the X blade system that's offered by Ballard? Um, and I guess there's Mitchell Gordy also put out a video recently that he did the X blade system, but he got them from somewhere else. I can't remember the name of that company. You can go over to his channel, uh, Mitchell's Lawn Care and see the company he used on it may be cheap or maybe around the same price but uh baylor's the one most commonly known for it that's who i went through for mine now years ago before this x-blade system ever came into play i used to run x-blades on a lot of different walk behinds and i just ran the bolt up through two blades got them held them so they were perfectly axed and perfectly parallel um and just ran the bolt up through there so that they didn't move and they stayed in the x shape okay um long before they ever made brackets to go on there i like the brackets it's a good idea but there is a way to run those blades. Now they say that you said some people have tried two um, mulching blades, like two gator blades, G5s, G6s. I've tried it. Doesn't do nothing but leave a mess. Um, they say that the best way you're supposed to run them is like with maybe a high lift blade on the bottom and a G5 or a G6, a gator blade, some type of mulching blade on the top. I've done that. It does okay. It does pretty decent. The best way, hands down, and I've done it on everything from, I've done it on the Great Dane Standard, I've done it on the Skag Standard, I've done it on the Wright Standard, I've done it, um, I now currently have it, I'm running on my Toro Standard Grandstand, um, I've done it on the uh, my Skag Turf Tiger, my Skag Tiger, I've done it on everything, okay, this is, I'm a believer in these blades. Um, and let me, before I go any further, because there's so many people that won't run them because they're worried about the damage to the mower, I've never, ever, ever, ever had an issue to a mower with these blades except for one time, and it was my fault. The key to running X blades, you have to engage the blades at half throttle, shut them down at half throttle. It's not as important for shutting them down, but it is insanely important at turning them on. When you engage those blades, it has to be at half throttle. And what I did was, and people were afraid you'd burn up a clutch, a spindle, this or that. No, that's what I did was I snapped the belt for the clutch. And that was because when I turned it on, it was that instant torque and it just yanked because you're spinning six freaking blades now instead of three. That was my own fault. It's the only time it happened one time. And to be honest with you, that belt had been on that mower for three years, okay? So the belt wasn't in the best shape anyway, but Key, number one, X-Blades, engage at half throttle. You should, but don't have to, disengage at half throttle. But always engage half throttle. Repeat after me, always engage half throttle, okay? Beat that into your freaking brain if you're running X-Blades. If you don't and you start snapping belts, I don't know what to tell you. Look in the mirror and say, you're a dumbass. Remember what Randy said, okay? Enough of that. So my number one way of running X blades and hands down, I literally am blowing, like I just did a property billing I did the other day, it was two and a half acres, the backyard, and the woods are on the other side. 
I went back there and I did just like I did last year with that Ferris blower. I went straight across and then went in reverse. Straight across, went in reverse. And I kept working those leaves all the way to the woods. The reason I did that is because my main plan was to go back there and mulch them up. Billy was bagging in the front yard uh, with the Skag V-Ride 2. And my plan was, okay, I'm going to go mulch these up. He can come back here, run over them real quick and barely fill up the bags at all because everything will be mulched. I started seeing how far I was pushing these blades. I was, or these leaves. I was pushing these leaves five and six passes to my right. There was so much force blowing out there. The thing is, is, by the time I got to the woods, there were barely any leaves left because I wasn't only using the force of blowing those leaves down that way toward the woods. Each time I went over them, I was mulching them up. So it was less and less and less each time I was pushing them. What I run is I run a high lift blade on the bottom and a high lift short tail blade on top of that. So yes, I am running two high lift blades. No mulching blades, no gator blades, no G5s, no G6s, no nothing. I am running two high lift blades. I've done it on everything. It is the best combination that I believe in if you're running X blades. Run two high lift blades. You'll never regret it. You'll think why the hell didn't I do this before and hands down you'll keep on doing it I'm telling you it's the way to go when grass is coming out of my deck it is so fine it is like powder literally like powder coming out of that deck so and when you're when you're in leaves I mean it mulches them up it, it does a phenomenal job now that being said if you are bagging with a turbine bagging system okay whether it's a you know, whether you're on a stander and you're running a, a bagging system with a turbine on it or a sit down zero turn or whatever you're running with the bagging system, you can get away a lot of times with running mulching blades because you already have that turbine sucking the volume, the material out of the deck and putting it up through that tube. So a lot of times you can get away with it. You start getting into wet leaves, you start getting into wet grass, thick grass, you're going to have problems. So you need to switch to a different blade. What I do, I run high lift blades, even on bagging systems. Now, this is the part where I said somebody contacted me and said, Randy, listen, I ran the same setup you did and I was having a problem. The problem was with accelerator baggers, grass catchers, or regular steel grass catchers. They'd say the mouth would clog up before the bagging system would fill up. Okay, I had the same problem. Everyone that's ever tried it has had the same problem. I'm telling you right now they have. If they have any experience on it, they've had the same problem. It's because the mulching blades that everybody wants to run in the fall, once you put that bagging system on, you it doesn't have enough throw. I've been over this a million times. I tell everybody, in the summertime, I run regular high lift blades on my mowers, but in the spring, I run high lift short tail. And I've made videos on this so you can see exactly what I'm talking about when I say high lift short tail. A high lift blade will suck the grass up, it'll suck the leaves up, it'll suck the material up and so you get it to stand up so that you get a nice good cut, nice even cut. The problem is it holds the material in the deck too long. It doesn't, it sucks it up and throws it out but not fast. A high lift short tail sucks it up and gets it the hell out of that deck fast. It's the fastest blade you will ever run for getting material out of your deck the fastest. Okay. I highly suggest if you're mowing any type of wet grass in the spring or in the fall, whenever you're mowing it wet grass and it's clumping out of your deck, switch to a high lift short tail and you will either eliminate or greatly reduce the amount of clumps you're blowing out of that deck. Deck design makes a huge difference. Um, some decks just can't handle it. It just all depends. Um, but for the majority, switch that high lift short tail and it'll cut it and get it out fast okay so it's going to cut down on the amount of clumping you have the reason i recommend either a regular high lift or a high lift short tail if you're running any type of grass catcher okay that's the steel catcher the accelerator um jumbo catcher off the back there's uh there's that new one that's made in australia that ballard sells i don't even know the name of it um, off the top of my head, but if you're running any type of grass catcher, you are the mouths are small in those things, and you don't have a turbine or any type of blower system sucking the volume, sucking the material out of that deck and putting it into the bagging system. So you need force from the deck to do that job for you. So you need something that's going to push that shit out of that deck, out of the mouth of that deck. Well, when you're pushing it out and it can't just free fly wherever the hell it wants to go. 
you need something to help it go, to encourage it to go to where you want to go. Where do you want to go with a grass catcher? You want to go to the back of the grass catcher. Start filling in from the back, work its way forward until you're full, right? That's the concept. So you need something that's going to push it through there, that's going to help it through there, especially if you're bagging leaves, if you're bagging thick grass, heavy grass, whatever, you want that force. I have never not been able to fill up a bagger on a grass catcher, no matter what brand it is. I have never not been able to fill it up before the mouth clogs, unless I was running a type of mulching blade, a G5, a G6, any type of gator blade, any type of, you know, Skag makes one called the Eliminator blade. Uh, Toro makes one I never knew about till recently. I saw one of Johnny Moe's videos. Toro makes one, but no matter what it is, the mulching blade just doesn't have the throw. Johnny says he's had some good luck running G5s, um, with running the 6.2 Jumbo Accelerator on the side of his machine, I, I haven't. And Johnny and I pretty much mow the same. We're in the same type of grass up in the Northeast. Um, I haven't. I don't know. Maybe he's just doing something a little different than me. He is running a different type of mower except for his Toro. We both have Turbo Force decks on those. So I, I don't really know. He must be doing something a little different than me. Um, but if Johnny, I'm not saying he's wrong. If Johnny says he's doing it, he's doing it because he's a no bullshit guy and he's going to lay it on the line. And if he says it isn't bagging worth a shit and it's just clogging, take it to the bank because what he says is, is, you know, it's gospel. It's true. But I just haven't been able to do it. Hands down, I say if you run any type of, I, I run them regardless, whether I have a turbine bagging system or just a grass catcher, I run them regardless. Now, if you're running some type of grass catcher and you're going to do the tarp bag that I showed in my video so that you can bag a much bigger quantity because you can hold, that tarp bag off that accelerator will hold way more leaves than I can hold in my Walker MT with a 10 bushel hopper, way more than the powered bagging system I have in my Skag V-Ride. It'll hold way more leaves than I had in my Tiger Cat 2 with the three bag bagging system. It'll hold more leaves than the clamshell for the Skag that uh, Ryan has now that I sold him my Tiger Cat 2. It'll hold way more. But the thing with that is, is you, you have to remember when you're it has to be mounted on there the right way and you have to in this case you definitely have to run a high lift blade because when you and get once you put that bagging system on that grass catcher if you've watched my videos if you haven't i strongly encourage you to go watch them once you put that bagging system on that grass catcher and you engage on blades that airflow goes through the grass catcher into that bag and blows that bag right up it puffs up like a big ass freaking balloon okay if you don't have the airflow going through to puff it up like a balloon so that um the leaves can get in there it's going to be ineffective it's not going to work also you not only now have to push that material out of the deck and into the grass catcher it has to get pushed all the way to the back of that tarp bag and the tarp bag that i showed you guys in the video where i showed you of me i built all i've made all different sizes but the one i showed you of me actually making was like four foot wide by seven and a half foot long Okay, that's a lot of volume. You have to clear those leaves and that shit all the way to the back. People have asked me in the past, can you bag grass with that? Um, I tried it one time, it didn't work. Grass is way heavier, way thicker, way denser than leaves, and it just couldn't handle the weight and it kept ripping the tarp bag right off the grass catcher. I don't know if anyone's ever done it, I couldn't do it. Um, but it's it's designed for leaves. That's, that's where it's gonna shine, that's where it's gonna help you out. But again, you have to have that volume you have to be able to move that volume of material so put a high lift on there okay now let's get into talking a little bit about the walker you know i know some guys love walkers some guys hate walkers it's back and forth it's kind of this or that it's a, it's whatever your thing is you know what i'm saying but if you're going to run a walker with a ghs a grass handling system on the back and that's what you're going to run leaves with and anyone that's ever run them you know even though they bag a little bit slower than other piece of equipment once you've run a walker bag and leaves, you're not going to want to touch anything else. They're just, you know, you get zero blow of the deck. I can go in a straight line and I can watch the left and right hand side of the deck and it's sucking leaves in from the sides. It's sucking them in from the front. It sucks them in from everywhere. It just does a phenomenal job. I can go in leaves that are two foot deep and I can pull the deck over it and then kick the deck left or right to break them up and go right back into it. And it just keeps eating them up. That being said, last year I decided to spend the money on the Versamo system. Okay, they are like a mulching blade system that bolts onto the existing blade on the Walker mower. So you now have four blades under there. Now, 
I originally did it because I heard that you can hold twice the volume in the hopper that you can normally hold in there running normal blades. And that was the only issue. Even with a 10 bushel hopper and the way the oscillator moves inside the walker and packs it right in. I mean, showed you guys in the videos. You open that back door, it looks like a bale of hay or straw. It's just packed in so tight. That's how it layers in there. So even though it's a 10 bushel hopper, theoretically, I think it holds a lot more because it just packs it in. So... Even though it holds that much, it's still, I mean, I couldn't, I could only get through so much and it was full and I have to shut the mower down, drive to where I had to dump, dump it, drive back, start again. I wanted to go further. So I decided to spend the money. I think it was like 250 bucks to buy this system. It was a lot of money um, for a blade system as far as I was concerned. I put them on in the fall and I have not taken them off since. I ran them all fall season. I've run them all in the spring. I don't bag with that mower in the summer, so I didn't really use it much in the summer. Now we're back in the fall and I'm using it again. It not only holds way more material in that hopper because it chops up so fine. When I dump it out, it literally comes out like powder. It chops that shit up so fine between the, the four blades that are under that 48 inch deck I have on there. It chops up so small. Plus it goes through the blower, which chops up a little bit more, and then up through the oscillator into the hopper. I can go a lot further on properties. I know my properties. I know how far I used to go before I got full. I can go a lot further before it fills up. And the biggest, the best thing, hands down, about those damn blades is the back of a walker deck. For those of you who don't know, I have a plastic tube that's rectangular shaped that goes into a circle shape up into the blower, which then takes it through the blower into the hopper. Okay, that plastic tube off the back of that deck used to clog up so easily off little sticks, this or that. I mean, I'm talking four or five times on a half acre property, I would have to stop and flip the deck up, pull the stick out, because once the stick gets clogged sideways, then leaves packing behind it, you're fucked. So what I would do um, was try to avoid every stick I could or go through the yard, pick up every little stick, this and that, and it would just waste a ton of time. These new ones, I run over all them sticks like crazy. I didn't clog one time last spring. This year, I've only clogged once so far. That was my fault. The alarm was going off. I knew the hopper was full. I wanted to finish that last pass right to where I was going to dump, and I hit a stick, and the hopper was already full, so I wasn't pulling through the suction I normally had, and it got clogged. That was my fault. But I run over sticks like crazy. I haven't had that problem since. I will never take those Versamo blades off that mower. Never. They will stay on there. Um, they work so much better when I was doing grass. Um, they're just phenomenal. So if you do have a walker that you bag leaves or grass or anything with, I highly recommend those Versamos. I am not an affiliate with them. I have no association with them at all. Um, they have been, I've contacted them. I've talked to them a bunch. They're just phenomenal people, but they just, they don't do the affiliate programs. They don't work with people, this or that, because as you guys know, those of you that know me, I'm very, very picky on who I will work with. You cannot pay me to say shit. As far as I'm concerned, if you have a shit product, I'm calling you out. You know, if you don't have a shit product and it's good, then I'll recommend you. I've recommended very few companies, um, but it, you know, it, it's just right off the top of my head. I, I definitely, I recommend Walker. I recommend Skag. Definitely Green Touch Industries with their racks. Uh, definitely Cujo. Definitely Fence Armor and Versamo. I mean, that's that's about the bulk. I may have missed one here or there, but um, that's the bulk of the things I've recommended. I've tried out so many products that I haven't even showed you guys on my YouTube channel, just because plain and simple, I literally laugh so hard at it. I'm like, I can't even do this. This would be the most negative video I've ever made in my life. I can't, I just came to it. I'm not even gonna waste my time. Just total crap. Um, so that's my recommendation to you. Now, as far as, and people have asked me, would you put the X-Blade system on a mower while bagging leaves, such as the Skag Tiger Cat 2 that I had with the turbine bagging system, the, um, the Skag V-Ride 2 with the turbine bagging system? I would not. And here's the reason why I wouldn't do it. Do I think it would work? Yeah, yeah, definitely do. But here's the reason I wouldn't do it. The reason I wouldn't do it is because that turbine is running off the pulley that's on top of your right hand spindle on the deck. So you're already putting that extra tension on it. And you notice it because even on my 25 horse Kohler EFI, my Skag V Ride 2, you burn a lot more fuel running that bagging system, okay? 
with that belt coming off that turbine for bagging. Now you go ahead and add three more blades to that deck. Now you're putting even more. I just don't want to put all that tension, all that torsion, uh, all that torque. I, I don't want to put all that extra stress in that mower. And there's really no need for it. It bags phenomenal. The only benefits it probably would have is it would probably shoot smaller shit through there because it sucks up just fine on its own. It would probably shoot smaller shit through there, chop it up more, and you could probably go further before your bagging system got full. That's about the only benefits it would have. Um, so no, I really don't see the need for it, and I actually see there could probably be a lot more damage in the end um, than there would be benefits to it. Okay, um, I'm not going to go into blowers and things like that for the leaf season. I've made a ton of videos on that, and I may eventually do a podcast on that, but um, I just I wanted to cover different mowers, different blade options, and different bagging systems for doing leaves. Like I mentioned before, there's a video for everybody, at least one, probably 20, 30, 40 of them pertaining to whatever equipment you're running on my YouTube channel. Go check it out. There is, there's just so much information there, so much video proof of what works and what doesn't work. I've had a lot of guys on forums tell me, you know, that's bullshit, that doesn't work, I've tried that, this and that. It's really easy to talk. It's more difficult to put a camera on that shit and show video proof, which I have done. Good, bad, or indifferent. Whether it works or doesn't work, I have actual video proof. So if you have any questions, go through my videos and look, and you will find videos on everything and anything you possibly think of pertaining to Leafs. So I hope this helped you guys out. I hope this will give you any information that you need as far as bagging systems, as far as blade systems, as far as you know what you're running, if it's cleaning up as good as you want it to, um, it, like the grass catchers, if they're you're getting a full fill up on a grass catcher because let's face it, they only hold so much anyway. If it's filling up enough before the mouth clogs up, things like that, how you can fix it. And then uh, if you're running, you know, regular bagging system mowers, uh, different ways you can run those. So, and more importantly, I think the, the meat and potatoes, the bulk of what people wanted out of this podcast was billing and how can you make money and how can you build customers? I highly suggest you don't do an hourly rate with your customers. Um, I don't, when it, when it comes to like cleanups, things like that, I don't give them a breakdown of this is the individual price of this. Is it. I give them a breakdown of every single thing I'm going to do. If they want a quote, if you're putting in a bid, I do the same thing for fall cleanups as I do for landscape jobs. I list everything down. Boom, 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 boom. This is exactly what I'm going to do. This is exactly what you're going to get for your money. Here's the total price. I don't break down shit. You start telling them what ease, especially if it's a landscape job, you start telling them what your mulch costs this, your mulch costs that. Everybody knows that you that people double the price of their mulch. It, you know, if, if you're a contractor and you're getting it for 25 bucks for a yard of brown mulch or let's say 35 bucks for a yard of black mulch, you're doubling that. Okay, you better be anyway. You better be at least doubling that. Some people triple it, and that's a cost mulch installed per yard. Okay, so let's just say you're getting it for 25 a yard. People are charging 75 a yard installed. That's what a lot of people do. But and a lot of people are even higher than that, so on and so forth. So you start breaking that down, and they know what it costs to go to your local nursery and buy a yard of mulch. They're thinking, they don't figure in your hourly rate. They don't figure in your insurance. They don't figure in your taxes. They don't figure in you hauling it there. They don't figure in none of that. All they think is, oh, my God. $75 a yard of mulch installed, and I know it costs 25 to buy it. Uh, 40 or 50 sounds more reasonable. They don't figure that in. So I don't break down prices for anybody, and I don't give hourly rates for anybody. I tell them exactly what they're going to get. Let them agree to it so that they know that's what they're going to get. Uh, if you do contracts, have them sign on the line, total price at the bottom. They agree to that price, you do it. They come back and say, well, you know, you didn't do this over here. You pull it back out and say, it's not on the list. You signed to it. I did everything that's on here. You have some skin in the game. You have some meat. You have something to protect you. Okay. You start giving hourly rates or you start breaking things down, it's going to come back to bite you eventually. It's just in my experience that's, you know, the hourly rate thing. I don't have experience on that. Just other guys I've talked to. But as far as breaking other things down, that has come back to bite me. I haven't done that in years. That's why. So, again, now I'm starting to ramble on, so I'm going to cut this short. Um, 
And we're at 38 minutes, like I mentioned in my last podcast and my intro podcast. I'm going to try to keep everything at an hour or under. Um, this is just a, a pre-recorded one. I'm going to do pre-recorded and I'm going to do live interviews, um, most likely via StreamYard. So I hope you guys follow me along. Um, I upload everything to usually on my YouTube channel under the podcast playlist. And also I'm using Anchor Podcast to upload everything to. Um, and what they do is they disperse it out for me. They send it out everywhere. I'm told that it will be on Google Play. It'll be on Audible. It'll be on Apple iTunes. It'll be on Spotify. It'll be on CastBox. I mean, they send it out to everybody, but I just started doing it a few days ago. They said it could take a week because once they send it out, those individual apps have to approve it and then they accept it and then bam, it's good to go from there. Um, there's like six of them already. They sent me alerts back telling me it's approved on. So um, I know Spotify is one. I think CastBox is one. Um, so it, it's on these different ones. So um, look for it. And if it's not on the... Um, the app of your choice that you normally use just please be patient with me it will get there and uh hopefully when i go to edit this and put this up uh the sound will be better and i will have these uh this mic figured out so um thanks again as always for watching everybody and or listening whatever you're doing um go make that money kick ass don't back down on your prices for anything. Stick to your prices, stick to your guns, make that money. That phone will always ring if you're doing what you say you're gonna do and you do the job that you're supposed to do, that phone will always freaking ring. If people wanna nickel and dime you, move on down the road. Spend that money on a property where people can appreciate your worth, okay? You can do this, you can make the money at it. Don't accept anything less than what you're worth and go check out those videos on Countryside Vlogs. You will get the answers, video proof of what you need regardless of what some dipshit is saying on any freaking forum because they can't give you video proof to back up shit that they're saying, but they'll be the first to slam on somebody else. You can get the video proof at Countryside Vlogs on YouTube every day, all day on anything you need. Thanks, guys. I'm out. I will talk to you in the next one.